Hello, my name is Martin Evening, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to work with the new HDR photo merge feature in Lightroom CC and Lightroom 6. Now, this is something that has been possible to do in Lightroom before, but you had to rely on using plugins such as uh, Photomatics or working with the Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop, which meant that you had to export the photographs out of Lightroom in order to be able to carry out a, such a photo merge. But now, for the first time in Lightroom, you can now do all this processing directly. And in this particular example here, I've got three photographs that were shot using a Hasselblad 50 megapixel sensor camera. These are three 3FR three files that I've got here. And this one on the left is underexposed by two stops. This is the normal exposure. And this one was overexposed by two stops. So to show you how this works, let me go to the photo menu up here and choose photo merge HDR and with source files of this size it will take a while to generate an HDR preview in this dialog. So here you can see the uh, preview result. The auto line option doesn't need to be switched on in this instance because the three source images that I used were captured with the camera mounted firmly on a tripod. If, however, you've taken the photographs handheld, which is possible to do, and where there is some slight movement in the individual exposures, then it's best to go and check auto-align, and then Lightroom will try and align the, each of the individual photographs together to get you the best uh, merged result. But as I say, if you don't uh, need to, then leave it unchecked. The next option down here is the auto-tone option. Now, for the source images that you use, it's probably best to not apply any developed settings at all because things like basic panel adjustments or tone curve adjustments will be ignored in the photo merge processing. So there's no real point in getting into processing your images beforehand. And I suggest that you leave everything at the default settings. Some camera raw settings, Lightroom settings, will be carried over, but most aren't. And so that's why I suggest that if you want to Check auto tone so that it will auto apply uh, auto tone adjustments to the finished merge, DR, uh, merge to HDR image. Next, we have the deghost settings. At the moment, I've got the show deghost overlay selected. And what this is all about is that in photographs such as this one, where you've got clouds moving perhaps through the sky, and definitely down here where we've got fast moving water there will be some difference between the individual exposures apart from the exposure themselves. There will be some movement. And so therefore, if you leave the image uh, select, uh, options here selected at none, this won't apply any deghosting. So if there's nothing moving between the exposures, such as say an interior scene, for example, where there's nothing moving at all, then none would be the best option to choose. But if you suspect there is some movement, then by clicking one of these three options down here, low, medium, or high, and then also at the same time checking the show deghost overlay, you can see when the preview has been rebuilt, these red areas here show those which have been picked up and detected uh, as being possible areas of where there's going to be movement. Now, I know that in this particular shot, there's bound to be a lot more movement than that. So I either need to choose the medium or the high setting. And I think here that the medium setting is probably going to be the best one to choose. And indeed, you can see here it's picked up a little bit of movement in the clouds at the top and quite a bit of the movement of the water. So I think that would be probably the best option to go with. So and now I can just simply click on the merge button and then Lightroom will carry out the photo merge processing. And you can see in the activity center up here on the top left that it says at the moment that it's creating an HDR image which means that it's taking the three, three FR Hasselblad files and then creating from those a single DNG master file. And so down here, you can see here is the finished HDR master, where if I go to the develop module, we can now uh, edit the image. I mentioned earlier about selecting the autotone option. You can see that indeed here in the basic panel that it has applied some auto adjustments uh, by selecting uh, the settings that you can see here. And of course you can fine tune those. So in this example, I think I might just take the exposure down a little bit, raise up the shadows a little bit more and increase the clarity because usually with photographs that have been processed this way, 
they will benefit from having additional clarity added to them. And the only other thing which I can see that needs to be done is to perhaps get rid of these two little center marks up here. And then I would say that I'm done. And if we go now back to the library module, let me show you how you can distinguish this image from others. If we go to the grid view, you can see that the image that we've created has got an HDR extension to it, which indicates that this is an HDR processed uh, image. So one way of being able to find your HDRs that have been created in Lightroom in this way is to do a search for a hyphen HDR extension. Another thing to point out is if we come down here to the metadata panel and choose the DNG options, you'll see that the pixel data type says floating points. So there's another, another distinguishing feature about HDR DNG processed images. Overall, it's a great new addition to the program to be able to reduce HDR images, processing them directly within Lightroom, and to be able to get results which don't look like HDR images. Uh, it doesn't have that fake halo effect that you sometimes get using other plugins or other methods of processing uh, images in this way.